thank you so much for joining me today. Well, thank you for having me. It's great to be here. Awesome. So I have been sharing a lot about memberships with my audience lately, and a lot of them are kind of trying to think outside the box a little bit in terms of expanding their brick and mortar in-person memberships kind of online. So is it possible to kind of add online components to a brick and mortar membership? 100%. Yes, absolutely. Listen, there's all kinds of opportunity. And when I think about memberships, I generally think about them in like three big categories. Like the first one would be like product-based memberships where you're taking, you know, a physical product. And instead of hoping that customers come back and buy from you again and again, you turn it into a membership where it's being delivered to them on a regular recurring basis. So examples of this might be like uh, the Dollar Shave Club, right? They, they took a razor that was normally like, you know, a challenging product to buy. Like sometimes you have to go into stores, you got to ask for like a lock and key to get the thing open to be able to get the rate. Like it's a pain in the butt, right? Well, they just simplified that process. And in a four and a half year period, this fledging little startup went from, you know, startup to selling for more than a billion dollars in four and a half years, which is kind of crazy, but they took a physical product. So this is where you see like, you know, um, product of the month type memberships, like, you know, socks of the month, underwear of the month, you know, tea of the month, coffee of the month, this of the month, that of the month, those types. And then you also see um, uh, subscription boxes. So uh, let's think about uh, Sarah Williams is a great example. She owned a retail shop and she's a savvy businesswoman. She started paying attention to, well, what are my best customers coming back and buying on a regular basis? And then she decided to take those items and turn it into a subscription box. And initially she sold it to her local clientele and she had about 300 members. And then she realized, wait a minute, there's no limits. And she expanded that way beyond and now has more than 3,000 monthly paying subscribers. So that's a product-based membership. Another would be a service-based membership. So Mary Claire Fredette is a great example. She has a brick and mortar uh, massage studio. And she did a founding member launch where her members get so many massages per month. And I spoke to her about a month ago. And I asked her, I said, what's, what's going on with the membership? Because I knew she launched it like three years ago. And she's like, well... I actually haven't launched since. And my heart kind of dropped from it. I was like, oh, like what, what's going on? Are you okay? And she's like, well, yeah, like I haven't had a need to. She said, I did my first launch and it booked my studio up solid. She's like, and 80% of the people are still with me three years later. I'm like, that's amazing, right? So she's taken a service that she was hoping people would come back and buy from her again. And she's turned it into a membership. And then the third big bucket, and this is one I would encourage everybody to really give some thought to, is a knowledge-based membership. And this is where you take the things that you know, love, and do, and your expertise and your skills you've acquired over the years, and you begin sharing it with people. Now, that might be sharing it to help others master a certain set of skills, like you know, uh, not knowing how to paint and then becoming a great artist. That journey doesn't happen overnight. There's a, it's a journey and that's what makes for a great membership or like uh, learning how to grow a successful daycare business. That doesn't happen overnight. Like you don't go from not knowing anything about daycare to having a successful daycare business like that. There's a journey to that growth. It's about taking what we know, love and do and teaching people the skills to, and helping them master it. That's one type of knowledge-based business, a knowledge-based membership. Second type would be helping solve an ongoing problem. So we typically see memberships that fall into this category around topics like weight loss, right? Because you're not going to go from being uh, overweight to the perfect weight like that. That's an ongoing problem that somebody's getting supported through. Or relationships. You don't go from a broken relationship to a thriving relationship like that. Like Ginger Dean is a great example. She helps women who have just left an abusive relationship. So She's helping women go from a place of trauma to being able to find love again, but they're not ready for a relationship, you know, when they have just come out of a traumatic uh, relationship themselves. So she's helping them on that journey. So these are examples of solving an ongoing problem. And the third type is where you're creating convenience. And this is where we've seen all kinds of amazing memberships where they are just simply eliminating the thinking for their members. And I'll give you some examples. So Julie Soule 
uh, during the pandemic, there were millions of parents stuck at home uh, all of a sudden with their kids thinking like, well, what are we going to do? Like kid, normally the kids are in school six hours. Now we're at home trying to figure out how to keep them productive and meanwhile do all the things, right? So uh, Julie was in the same boat. And so she's a very artsy gal and she just committed to creating the most epic art lessons for her kids. And she did, and the kids loved it. And then one day her friend's over and sees these art lessons. And she's like, Julie, these are amazing. Like, can I use those from with my kids? And Julie's like, sure. And then more and more people started asking. So she started a free Facebook group. And before she knew it, that group grew to 2000 people. And so last January, she did a founding member launch for a membership. She ended up welcoming more than 300 members. And by August, that grew to 1,000. And one year later, that was more than 1,400, where she's providing art lesson plans for homeschooling moms. And it's called Glitter Bombers. And so what she's done is she's just taken what she was already doing and providing the lessons for other moms at home. And it saves those moms a ton of time. So we've seen many provide lesson plans, like whether it be in schools, like Patty Palmer does the same for uh, other art teachers. I think of Caitlin and Jessica do it for other teachers uh, teaching reading and writing. There are many different ways providing lesson plans, providing templates. So things that you know people were already using in their business. I think of Michelle, she has this uh, uh, business where she creates these certain types of uh, templates that uh, she uses to create uh, different designs in her business. Well, she was already creating those templates anyway. And now what she does, she also has a membership where she provides those templates to others who have a similar sort of business. I think of like Manu who has a uh, business where she provides social media templates for others. I think of Andrew Krauts who provides Facebook ad templates for real estate agents. Like all of these are examples of creating convenience for their members. So there's lots of different ways that we can serve our people, whether it's through product-based memberships, service-based memberships, or knowledge-based memberships where we're teaching people how to master skills, solve an ongoing problem, or we're creating convenience for them. So my hope is that no matter what business you have, you start to think about how else could you serve people with what you're already doing in your existing business now? I love that. And I love that it can really scale the revenue potential of a local business and it can really allow them to reach more people and help more people. Absolutely. So 